All right, welcome back. This is a continuation of the DCS for Beginners series. If you've been following along, I've guided you through downloading and installing and configuring DCS, getting your keybinds set and your controls set. And today we're gonna get you in the air. Now in order to fly, you gotta start the engine. Every jet in DCS has its own startup procedure. It's not like a car. You don't just put the key in the ignition and turn it to start it. There's a, a few steps that you have to take. Now some aircraft do have a single keystroke auto start sequence, but not all of them have this. The SU-25 Frogfoot does not. So on some of these aircraft, you are going to have to learn the startup procedure. There are three ways to learn the startup procedure for each aircraft in DCS. The first way is by reading documentation. Eagle Dynamics has provided documentation for all of their aircraft. Third-party developers have provided documentation for all of their aircraft. And in addition to that, a guy by the name of Chuck Owl has provided documentation on all of the full fidelity aircraft. Now, all the documents are very helpful and very easy to understand. However, I tend to gravitate more towards Chuck's guides more than the official documentation. Sometimes I'll go to the official documentation where Chuck's guides doesn't cover something, but typically if Chuck hasn't covered something, he will later. So definitely go check out Chuck's guides if you're having trouble understanding the official documentation. Chuck's guides just give a lot more pictures and a lot more descriptions of things that the official documents usually don't give. So that's my opinion. I like Chuck's guides better, but there are times where I'll refer to the official docs uh, rather than Chuck's guides. It's just kind of a case by case basis. So you've got both of those. The second way to learn how to start up an aircraft is to have Daddy Waggy teach you. Now, Matt Wagner doesn't voice all the training missions in DCS. Some of the third-party developers have their own uh, recorded voices for their training videos or training missions, rather. But for the SU-25T, it's Matt Wagner's voice. So you click on training and you'll have the training tutorials for each of the aircraft that you have purchased. Now, there have been times where an aircraft in DCS does not have training tutorials here. And in those cases, uh, it usually comes at a later date. Most of the time when I've seen that, it's early, early, early access. But today we're gonna to be flying the SU-25T, so we're gonna go through that. So in this case, you would select the aircraft you want on the left here, and then select the tutorial that you want to follow. In this case, we're gonna do Startup, click Start. Once you're here, you can go through the briefing, the situation, temperature, wind, all that, blah, blah, blah. When you're ready to be instructed by Matt Wagner, just click fly and he will start talking to you and he'll walk you through step-by-step step how to start up the frog foot. He's gonna be following the proper procedure. You're gonna start with powering on the electrical system. Then you're gonna start each engine individually. You're gonna turn on all your lights, all that stuff. It's all gonna be the proper procedure for the frog foot as close as you can get with a low fidelity module like this. We, we can't click the cockpit. We can't interact with the systems other than just hitting buttons on our keyboard. And as you can see, there are other tutorials here, all the way from bombing to air to air missiles for the Frogfoot. So you can follow all of these and get to know the Frogfoot. The third way to learn an aircraft is to watch YouTube tutorials. Now I would train you on the entire Frogfoot, but it would all be for naught because there's already an amazing Zero to Hero playlist by Ralphie Dude. If you want to learn everything there is to know about the Frogfoot and DCS, I would highly recommend you go through Ralphie Dude's Frogfoot Zero to Hero guide. Link in the description below. Now for your first flight, I would not recommend going multiplayer. So if you're planning on flying multiplayer, I wouldn't do it just yet. Let's get through startup and flying around and getting familiarized with the systems before you go multiplayer. So today, let's click on instant action. Now you have two maps for free, Caucasus and Marianas, and you have two aircraft for free, the SU-25T and the TF-51D. You'll notice each aircraft has different instant action missions for each of the maps. For the SU-25T, you see the Marianas map as cold start, takeoff, free flight, landing, ground strike, air combat. Caucasus, they look different right? Cold start. I've had people not know what that means. Cold start just means a cold cockpit, meaning the jet's just sitting there with chocks on the wheels, uh, not moving. Cold, dark cockpit. Nothing's nothing's on. Just sitting there on the ramp. That's a cold start. Hot start. If you ever see that, hot start just means you're starting in the air already. Jet's already running or you're starting on the ramp hot or on the runway hot which means the jet's already up and running. Everything's already aligned. Everything's ready to go. You can just go full throttle and get up in the air. You'll notice on the Caucasus map, there is no cold start instant action. 
So we're going to go to the Marianas, go to cold start, just click on it. I'm going to walk you through this. Now, for those of you who are English speakers and cannot read Russian, the entire Su-25T's cockpit is in Russian, which is accurate to real life. But if you don't read Russian, you're not going to really be sure exactly of what you're looking at unless you do know what kind of gauge that is, what it's reading. Even though it's in Russian, you'll kind of figure out, oh, that's what that is. Like that's the AOA indicator right there. I can tell that. Down here are the temperature gauges for the engines, you know, blah, blah, blah. But without being able to read it and you're not familiar with typical aviation gauges, you'll probably get a little lost here. So to get a English cockpit, I recommend that you download Devrim's SU-25T English cockpit mod. This is found on the DCS website. I have a link to this exact uh, file in the description below. Make sure you close DCS before you install this. Once you have that downloaded, you're going to want to extract it. So right click on it click extract all. Extract it to the folder you want to extract it to and click extract. After you've done that, you'll have a folder in the location that you told it to extract to. Open that up. Inside that you have a liveries file and a readme.txt. If you open up the readme, it'll tell you exactly where to place this folder. So let's do that. So C drive, users, your username, saved games, and DCS. Now, leave it here. Just click this and drag it over to DCS. Let go. And if you get prompted to overwrite, just click overwrite. Once that's done, double click DCS, go to liveries, and you should now see cockpit SU-25T. If that didn't work for whatever reason, the manual way is to open up liveries here, get to cockpit SU-25T, right click, click copy, go to the save games folder, double click DCS, liveries, right click inside the liveries folder once you're inside and click paste. That's it. That's really all you have to do. Once you've done that, launch DCS again, go up here to the settings cog, click special, then select the SU-25T and right next to customized cockpit, you'll have this drop down, click the drop down and you should now see English, select English and click OK. All right. Now that we've done that, let's go ahead and go into the instant action, click instant action. SU-25T, Marianas, and we'll select the cold start. All right, and once you're loaded in, you can read the briefing here, and when you're ready, click fly. Press left control C to close the canopy. Check your throttle, make sure your throttle is in idle. If it's not, move your throttle around until it's down to idle, all right? Once you're at idle, go ahead and turn the power on, right shift L, and that'll turn the electrical system on and all the gyro gyros are gonna start spinning up. Uh, you'll notice your compass is moving. Everything's getting aligned. This takes about three full minutes. So wait the full three minutes. You can check the time right here. It's three o'clock. So we're going to wait till 3.03 before we do anything with the jet. We cannot move the jet. If you do, you'll have trouble navigating. All right. So, um, however, I have not had any problems starting the engine while this is aligning. So uh, go ahead and start your engines. Press right shift home and that'll start both engines simultaneously. You don't have to start up the left engine, check the EGTs and the temperatures, make sure everything's fine and then move on to the right engine. Just start them both up, right shift home. Done. Now, if the communications with the tower and other aircraft is getting loud and obnoxious for you and you want to limit that, you can't turn it off, but if you want to limit it, you can press right shift M and limit the communication just to player communications. Press right shift M again, and you can add reports to player. Press, press it again, and you can cycle to all communications. Press it again, back to players comms, all right? Now limit it. It won't stop all the communications, but it'll limit how much you hear on the radio. All right, and that's it, we're started up. So really it's just right shift L to turn on the power and then right shift home, done. There's nothing else to do. Just wait the three minutes. Now, if you're getting the stall warning while you're sitting here on the ramp, it's just because the AOA sensors are moving around in the wind. Nothing to be concerned about. If you want to turn that off, you can't really turn it off, but you can mute the sound by pressing right shift N, and that'll mute that. And now if it goes off, you'll just see the light, but it, you know, it, it won't yell at you. All right. We are at three and a half minutes now. We should be good to go. Go ahead and push the throttle all the way up. And once the jet starts rolling, Pull the throttle back to just about idle and push it up to about 25% or so. Look both ways. Make sure you're not taxiing out in front of something and use the pedals, rudder pedals to steer yourself around. 
We're going to go out to the uh, runway to get in the air. Now, if you want to, you can use the comms menu to ask for permission to taxi out. I personally find DCS's ATC a little lacking, um, so I don't really use it unless I absolutely have to. There are some campaigns that require you to use the uh, comms menu, but I typically don't use it if, unless I have to. Uh, but if you do want to, press back, backslash, and that'll open up the comms menu. So up here you can see it. You can either use the function keys, F1, F2, F3, F4, to select each of these options, or you can literally just click on it. And then uh, Saipan International, I can request startup, uh, and then request taxi to the runway, request takeoff, blah, 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 blah. So it's, it's entirely up to you if you want to. It is not required, although there are campaigns, like I said, there are some missions and campaigns that do require it. So, um, but I'm not gonna be using that here. Let's taxi out and get in the air. Now, if you're lost on the ramp and you're trying to find the runway, you don't know where to go, you can press the F10 key and that'll bring up the map. You should see your aircraft here on the ramp and uh, the runway and ramp that you're uh, taxiing around. If you don't know where your jet is, you can press this little arrow up here and that'll center the map on your aircraft. Just scroll in and out to find your aircraft and then uncheck that and you should be able to move the map around again. So now I know I need to get up here. I'm gonna turn a slight left here, turn right, and a left, and I'm at runway 07. Press F1 to get back into the cockpit. Now, if you're hearing this heartbeat monitor, it sounds like, or this IV machine here, <laughs> it's it's actually this RWR down here. It's just letting you know that there's a radar out there, and uh, yeah, that's all it is. Nothing to be concerned about. All right, once you come up to this black and yellow dotted line here, it's the threshold, just press the W key and hold it. As your brakes, you can stop. We're gonna look both ways before crossing the street here. Look left, look right, make sure no one's on final coming in to land. If we're not sure, we can press the F10 key, go back to our map and just drag it over. Make sure that no one's on final, no one's taken off on the opposite direction. I don't wanna be jousting on the runway here. Press F1 to get back in the cockpit. And we'll taxi out onto the runway. All right, before we take off, we need to make sure that our flaps are in the takeoff position. So over here you have this switch for the flaps. Just press the F key and that'll put it the flaps down halfway. If you want to go to full flaps, landing flaps, press left shift F. That'll put them all the way down. And you'll see an indication down here by your gear indication that you have full flaps with double, double lines underneath each wing. Press F to bring them back to half. And then F again to bring them all the way up and those lights will go out. We need them at half flaps for takeoff, all right? The other thing you need to know is your speed. It's up here on the top left, 80 knots. The reason it so shows 80 knots and we're not moving is because there's not enough wind inside the pitot tube to register speed. So we need to get up to at least 80 and then it'll show uh, speed. We need to get up to about 160 knots. Then we're gonna start pulling back on the stick gently and she'll take off on her own. Once she's off the ground, let go of the stick a little bit, give her Give her a little bit of the, that elevator back and she'll take off on her own. So we got flaps down. We're gonna bring our RPMs up to 75%. So press and hold the W key to hold your brakes. Your RPM gauge is right here. I'm gonna throw the throttle up till about 75% RPM. Don't go any further. If you go any further than 75, you'll find yourself skidding down the runway with your brakes pressed down. <laughs> All right, when you're ready, full throttle. Let go of the brakes and just step on the pedals. Just play with the pedals left and right. Try and keep yourself as centered as possible. We're almost at 160, start pulling the stick back just a tad and she'll start to take off on her own. Bring the gear up by pressing the G key. And about 300, pull those flaps up too. That's it. You are in the air. Fly her around, get used to her. Get an idea of how fast she uh, uh, maneuvers. Um, uh, try and maybe even do some stall exercises. Try and get yourself out of a stall, things like that. Just play around. And when you're ready, we're gonna set up to land here. All right, got ourselves lined up here for a long approach. 
We're going to drop our flaps and open our speed brakes. Drop the throttle down to idle. We'll get ourselves down to about 350. And I know I said knots earlier. I meant uh, kilometers per hour. <laughs> all right, 350. Press left shift F to bring the flaps all the way down. You'll see the nose kind of want to rise, so you'll have to push the stick. Keep yourself down here. Now what we're looking at here are a couple things. I'm gonna pause the sim here so we can talk about that for a second. So first thing is your VVI. That's this gauge down here with the needle right below zero. This is showing your vertical velocity, which is why it's called the VVI. I think that it's also called the VSI in other aircraft. Uh, vert vertical, vertical speed indicator. I think there's a R RCDI or something like that. Anyway, they all mean the same thing. They're showing your climb and your descent rate. All right. Now this is also shown on your HUD over here on the far right, this, hor uh, this horizontal arrow with the vertical line and the two on top of the arrow there. That is how fast I'm descending and climbing. Now, when we touch down, we want that to, well, I like to have it at about a one, if not less. We want to touch down really softly, right? All right, well, we're going to unpause and we're looking good. I'm going to go ahead and drop the gear. Make sure you do not drop your gear above 400 uh, kilometers per hour or you will overspeed the gear. We'll have problems. I'm going to close the speed brakes. We're going to zoom in and we're going to look at the Pappy lights. The Pappy lights are over there on the left. You can see right now we have two red and two white. The saying goes, Red on white, you're all right. White on white, you'll fly all night. Red on red, you're dead. So what we're seeing right now is what we want. I'm gonna bring the descent up a little bit. I don't wanna get any more red there. Looks good, just wanna keep those two reds and two whites. If you start to get a third red, push the power up. If you're getting a third white, let go of the power, bring it back down. I think we're starting to lose. There we go. All right, good. And keep ourselves as centered as we can here. Right about now, we're going to zoom back out. We don't need to use the Pappy lights anymore. Bring her down. A little bit of a flare at the end here and drop the throttle. And about a one, perfect. Hold the W key and open up the speed brakes. Start slowing us down. And that's it. I hope this was helpful. Like I said, if you wanna learn more about the SC25T, I highly recommend Ralphie Dude's uh, Zero to Hero guide for the Frogfoot. Uh, there's no need for me to even make a guide because it's that good. You need to go check it out. All right, see you guys in the next one. Let's go. Way up there. Play him out.